Hi, glad you could join us. I'm Annette Sherman. This is Community. K.T. Curran. Does that name sound familiar to you? Well, if you're a theater person or if you're a high school person, the name is probably familiar to you, or at least you've heard it before. I've known K.T. We were just talking about it before we got the cue to go on the air. Uh, I've known K.T. probably 20, 25 years. She was, uh, hasn't changed a bit. In fact, I'm really angry about that. <laughs> I think she should have gotten older, but she didn't because she's so busy and she's so active doing incredibly wonderful, exciting things. I'm going to let her talk about it, but I want you to meet K.T. Kern. Then we have Jerry Chambliss, and Jerry is a creative producer. We'll find out what a creative producer does. I didn't mention that KT was, was the uh, Source Theater Director, and that's not easy to say, the Source Theater Director, and we'll find out about that in just a moment. Then we have Brandon Combs, and Brandon is an actor. You may say, oh, I know him. Well, you may if you're watching Siesta Key. <coughs> Or if you saw the previous movie that was produced by the Source Theater and was an enormous success, and KT will tell us more about that. In fact, we have a clip of it for you, so you're in for some exciting programming. KT, let's go back. And uh, gosh, I don't. When I met you, you you were taking young people into the schools. Tell about that time. Yes, well, as director of the Source Theater, uh, we do plays in the schools about vital issues that help young people lead healthier lives. Are you still doing that? We're still doing oh, that. Oh, I'm so glad because it really, it is a beneficial, it's entertaining and it's wonderful, but it's also beneficial. Go, go ahead and tell them so they'll know what I mean. We just did a play at Booker High School two weeks ago called Freshman Year about teen pregnancy. And actually in our community, there's been a rise in teen pregnancy. And the schools asked us specifically if we could present our play to get teens talking and looking at this issue in a more serious way. The people that come with you, the actors and actresses that come with you to do these shows in the schools, used to be, they probably still are, that age group. They really are that age. Yes, we have a mix. We have high school students, and we have students that go up into their 20s. Uh, we have a professional wing of the source now that also does films and commercials and things like that. And so we have a combination of young people who are training and performing, and we have older people who are paid performers that do our film projects. The kind of discussion that takes place I think you must have brought me a film of that at one point along the line because we we, we force KT to come on the program every year <laughs> because I love what she does and I think that the audience, I know the audience also loves what she does. Did you tell me? <laughs> you are continuing to do that. Yes. Go into the schools and talk about, give me a for instance. Well, this play that we did a couple of weeks ago is called Freshman Year, and it's about three teenage girls during their freshman year of high school and how their lives explode when one of them is assaulted, which was very timely with the Me Too movement, with so many young people coming forward talking about sexual assault, and one of the girls is, becomes pregnant and how they are helped by a young guidance counselor who helps them begin to look at their future. Now, the kids in the audience start to talk about this. Yes. And either are, are critical or they are saying, well, I have a friend who, who went through that same kind of thing, <clears throat> and give their opinion and their thinking. And really, it's a wonderful way to express themselves amongst their, their contemporaries. Yes. There's no judgment. Right. That's a key part is we, we get young people examining their behavior and looking at the psychology behind why they make the decisions that they do. And without judgment, because when you're 14 years old and you're making a mistake, your brain isn't developed enough to know that you could be making a catastrophic mistake that could change your whole life. So we get young people talking about these things. That is so vitally important, and not only important, but it's productive. It, it does good things, yes. and you know it does. Well, 
you went forward with Source Theater. At some point, you had reason to want to produce a film, a, a full-length film. Yes, a feature film. A feature film. Uh huh. Tell yes. about. We, uh, we had a feature film, uh, The First Time Club, that premiered at the Sarasota Film Festival. Does that Festival. mean what I think it means? It does. <laughs> it's about four girls, or three girls and a boy, who make an oath that they're going to lose their virginity before the end of freshman year. And they are catapulted into a high-risk world. You used to write all these plays. Do you still do it? I do. I write the plays in close collaboration with the young people involved, yes. Okay. Because it's so honest and it's so frank that I, I look at you and I know you're past 16. Not <laughs> Just much, barely. But he's past 16. But for example, uh, Brandon, who you'll be talking to in a moment, he and another young man named Carson very much helped sculpt some new parts of uh, the story. They were both appear in the play and were helping look at parental involvement and how young people sometimes will copy their parents if they, for instance, have a a parent that cheats on a yeah, mom, yeah, then the, the young man might then go on to do that with his girlfriends. I, there's so much more that, that I wanted to talk about, but I want to talk to these two men yes. because there's a lot, and then we'll come back to yeah. you, Katie. Uh, suffice to say, uh, I think they have a phone number to put on the screen. Do they, Lucy, have a phone number? Would you put that phone number on the screen? Because we're only a half-hour show, and we were, we're, there are three people, and they all have fascinating stories to tell. However, if we miss out on something or if there's a question that you have, you can call the Source Theater and speak to KT Courage. She's very, very accessible and, and just what you see is what you get. <laughs> what I mean by that is that she seems very accessible and she is. She'll talk on the, with you and she, she'll explain things to you because that's the kind of person she is. Okay, then we have Jerry, Jerry uh, Chambliss. Yes, ma'am. And Jerry is a creative producer. Are there, are there non-creative producers? <laughs> there are a ton of different producers. Um, depends on the level. Are you going to have to speak up? because it's... Yes, depends on the level of uh, the job, what position you are within the film industry and such like that. But basically, a creative producer is somebody from conceptualization to uh, distribution aids the director um, along the way with all of the precepts that uh, a film all requires. All of the needs that they All have. of the needs. Aids with What's actors. What's your background, Jerry? My background, um, I've been a uh, film producer and director for last 10, 15 years. Before that, I was in Since animation. Since you were five years old. Isn't that Since I was five years old, yes. Wow. Um, I have my own production company here in Sarasota, but I also uh, run a film program at Riverview High's International Baccalaureate Program. And I'm also an adjunct professor over at Ringling College for the film program as well. So I've been in the creative uh, industry for the last 20 some odd years. If I could give you three wishes, okay, what would they be? Three wishes. <laughs> One, um, for us to have another successful film coming out of... Um, Look, you can go big because it's a yeah. wish. I mean. <laughs> well, my, my second one would be um, my daughter to thrive and grow in the industry that she really loves and uh, watch her become successful and uh, three have a great retired life. <laughs> it's interesting to me because I used to have the the young people from the uh, Oslo Conservatory and I guess most people know the Oslo Conservatory because it's, it's a learning process three years work very hard to get their equity uh, credentials and go on from there. Uh, and I used to ask them before we, the last question sort of thing, where do you want to be in 10 years? And I've been on the air for close to 40 years. Way back when, the answer would be, oh, I want to see my name up in light starring <laughs> and on Broadway. The answer lately is, I would just like to earn my living being an actor. Yeah. Or earn my living being a director. Earn my living in theater. And all the heads, I don't know if you can see them or not, all the heads are going up and down, yes. <laughs> and I, I think that's what the genuine answer should be. Yes. Yeah. That Never mind the lights and so forth, because that, that's a dream, and it lasts for a very short period of time anyway, it does. best. Yeah. But to be able to earn your living for 30 or 40 years in what you love to do, 
and what you're bringing to the world, that's exciting. Absolutely. Most exciting aspect of what you do uh, with the Source Theater. Work with KT. Uh, she's an inspiration uh, to the community. She is an inspiration. Works. She's an inspiration for many reasons, but yes. she's so genuine. It comes from her heart and soul. Absolutely. And she has and a lot. It doesn't take long to figure that one out. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and she has a lot of the same morals that I do with regards to children, with regards to youth, and being able to provide them a voice that they so desperately need to have instead of it being hushed, hushed, and pushed into the background. Um, so that was one of the main reasons why I partnered up with her on uh, her last film and then really took a, a large leap forward on the second film to really help her out and be her second to assist her in making this stronger. Did you say the wish that you wanted that I was going to make come true? Oh. Did we ever get to that? Uh, no, <laughs> you I didn't digress. tell me that I got a fourth wish. <laughs> what, what's the wish? Which one? Which one are you providing me? <laughs> <laughs> the th of the three wishes, pick one. Oh, it's got to be Naya. It's got to be my daughter, yes. As, <laughs> as much as I love my wife, I know I'm going to have a great uh, retirement life with her, but it has to be my daughter, her, her wish for her life and to okay. see her life uh, I thought he was, as much as I love my wife, there's this wonderful little blonde. That <laughs> <laughs> well, she is. Happens to be she seven is. years old. <laughs> yep, and yeah. she's, a, and she's she just a, a sweetheart. You'll have to have she's her seven. on your show. <laughs> yeah. All righty, Brandon. Alrighty. I want to find out, first of all, because everybody's thinking the same thing, what the heck did he do with his hair? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's up right now, you know, in a nice man bun. If I Is take this it down, something that, that, that young people do? Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming around more. The man bun is uh, definitely coming around more. I think it's um, coming back. It's, yeah, it's coming back. It's def I'm, I'm bringing it back. Yeah. And, um, bringing yeah. back the man bun. Bringing yeah. back the man bun. I happen to know that you're 22 years old, because you told me earlier before we went to the studio. Mm -hmm. Great age. At what point in your life did you decide you want to be an actor? Well, um, at what point did I de decide to take you it? You speak up a little bit, I'll, okay. I'll be able to hear well, better. Well, I always wanted to do movies, and I always wanted to be an actor, but it wasn't until about two years ago that I met KT, and we worked on the First Time Club. And she really did make a dream come true for me, um, and the best part about it was the light that we gave to the children and the, so the youth. The first time you acted was with KT's, with the Source Theater. The first Source Theater, yep. That and was my obviously first time. You, you, you figured you were right. And KT yeah. must have figured you were right because you mm -hmm. had, was it a leading role in the movie that was so successful? Yeah, I was, uh, I was a... Uh, featured. Featured, yeah, I, I was a okay. featured, yeah, exactly. We've got a clip for you from that movie that really has had tremendous success, <laughs> considering the fact that it was not a multi-million dollar production. I don't know if it was, if, I don't want to mention how much it cost, but I know whatever it cost, it was done on a budget, and a, probably a very, very intelligent budget. Uh, the name of the movie? The First Time Club. Mm -hmm. The First Time Club. And uh, we're gonna see a clip from it. What, what happened with that movie? It went on to, it went on to the Sarasota Film Festival and the Orlando Film Festival, and now we've had several distribution uh, offers, and we're weighing what we're going to do with it. Yeah. I'm going to say I knew her when. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it now. Okay, we're going to see that clip as soon as they're ready. They're ready to see it. Okay, uh, we're going to see Brendan Gomes. I'm waiting for a chance to stick that case. Bro, I'm just glad we didn't get busted. All right. Who was that girl you were hitting on? Her name's Allison. Yeah? Yeah. How old was she? Like, 13? <laughs> Screw you, bro. She's 15. She did look exactly like your type. Oh, yeah? yeah. What's my type? That's a little prude. You usually go for more experienced. Just lay off it. All right, Danny. Uh, you're not wasting out on me now, are you? Listen, bro. Allison's cool, so just shut up about it. Hey. wish we could play the whole movie but of course we can't mm -hmm. however we're going to put that number on the screen and if you want to know where you can see the entire movie call uh, call uh, uh, KT and she'll tell you where it's playing now and where you can see it and uh, that kind of thing uh, so the number is on the screen 
and you can mark it down. What is the number, KT? 941-356-8336. That's the number that's on the screen. That's okay. it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> was this comedian who used to do that and say the numbers on the screen and read, read an entirely different number <laughs> drives people mad. Tell me about tell me about this this movie and your part. In well, it. the first time club. First of all, um, when I was young and I was in school watching educational films like this. I need you to speak a little I, louder. I'll, I'll bring the volume up. Well, when I was young and I was watching educational films like this in school, they were just so boring and I didn't really like get anything from it. But the way that KT directs it, puts it in a light that is raw, it's edgy, and it's real life, real theater, which is sort of the slogan that Source goes by. And um, I really feel like it impacts kids in a way that they could get something from it and not get bored and not feel like, oh, this is your normal educational preachy film. It's, um, it's stuff that I really feel like uh, inspires the youth and gives them something to run with, which I feel like I did. Now, have. I would imagine that, that you, you've had offers. I know you're involved in the Siesta Key. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it, a continuing series? Actually. It's a continuing series, yep. And that, and that should certainly be something that uh, gives you a lot of popularity in this area. It definitely does. Uh, a lot of people watch it. And um, what's funny is uh, before I was doing that, I was with uh, the First Time Club. That was my first time being on camera. and. That definitely helps out <laughs> on the TV show as well. <laughs> well, that, that's that's great. That that gives you credentials and it moves you forward, whether it's TV or whether it's theater mm -hmm. or television or whatever uh, uh, medium you're going to be involved in. But exactly. knowing all of them and having worked in all of them is, is terrific. What would you say, Jerry, is the most important job of a creative producer? Your, your function. To aid the director and the production as a whole to make sure that any problem is solved and solved efficiently and effectively. So from every aspect. From any, every any aspect. Any kind of problem that comes up, they call, call Jerry. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then yeah. you come and you say, well, I don't know how to fix that, but we'll give it a shot. Yeah, it's, it's about... We've already had three problems this morning that I called Jerry at 7 a.m. Jerry, had nothing to do it. with theater problems. <laughs> yep, no, had right. to do with the film. Yeah. Right. It really is about problem solving, and it, it really is to understanding all the facets of the film uh, industry, the film uh, creative process from start to finish, being able to handle actors, being able to handle uh, the crews, being able to handle situations on set, being able to come up with creative solutions that might not be able to be handled on, on location, artistic endeavors, uh, just about pretty much anything, really. Okay, I've got a quick question for each of the three of you. Okay. KT first. If I can give you, uh, we're talking about a wish, one wish. What would it be? One wish right now would be that this film is a great success. It's about gun violence and school shooting, this new film that we're working it's a on. a new one. We didn't have time to talk about it. We just have to get you on. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I would wish that our film helps save lives and helps inspire young people to stop school violence. I think that that's what you're doing. You're doing films and doing uh, source theater is minimally or maximally saving lives and saving people. Uh, because the teens today are need what you're doing, yes. desperately need what you're doing. So keep on, keep Thank on you. keeping on. Jerry, one wish. Well, it would be to echo KT. I really want this film to succeed and be able to provide a voice for um, of the youth. That want to make your mark no in, in what KT is doing. Absolutely. Okay. And my one wish would be that I wish that uh, creatives like KT multiply and I've, that this film inspires people to keep the world rotating in that light and I didn't hear more. the word fame and fortune the word <laughs> well that's all secondary that's all wrapped so, up in that that's in all, that, that all comes in that with wish changing the world because uh, you, you're not going to object to fame and fortune. <laughs> not going to object to fame. Particularly and not the fortune part. <laughs> the fortune part that just comes with buying. How does your family house. feel? How does your mom and dad feel about you being an actor? Um, they uh, well, <laughs> they they definitely like it. Um, to 
depends on what I'm doing and how I'm portraying myself on TV. That's when they're like, don't do that. But, <laughs> but um, they like it. They like that I'm following my dreams. You have a beautiful smile and a very so handsome much. face. I'm not uh, neglecting Jerry. You're very handsome <laughs> as well. <laughs> but, That's but I'm a not 22. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not 22. Of course, when I see KT, and as I say, I've known her a long, long time, and I'm really annoyed at the fact she does not <laughs> get any older. That's it. Now, I don't know whether it has to do with what that she's doing something that's wonderful and may, that shows in her remaining youthful. And I think it does have a, a play a part in it. When you love what you're doing and you, you, you can't help but at night when you're about to fall asleep thinking, hey, this was a very productive day. And I think we saved maybe a few kids who didn't know which direction to go in. Maybe they were helped a little bit mm -hmm. absolutely and then you're by that time you're in dreamland you're, you're sleeping but I you should be very you are I know very proud of what you're doing and and you talk about it in a, in a kind of a simple offhanded way <laughs> but you know and and I know and many many people know that what you're doing is important it's not just entertainment it is but it's not just mm -hmm. and what it does is rattle and shake up young people, kids today, that so need that kind of shaking up. And they not necessarily eager for it from their parents. <laughs> but when they deal with their contemporaries and they deal with someone that they can, they know understands what their situation is, which is KT Curran mm -hmm. and Jerry Shambliss. Okay. Maybe because you're an actor, yeah. so you're, you're out there, you're on the stage, and, yeah. and these people are, are producing. Very, very important. But I think you feel that way, too, Absolutely. when you work with Source Theatre. When I work with Source Theatre, I feel like we come together and we really get the greater good of what we're trying to do. Because we all are in the same uh, attitude, and we all have the same attitude when we're filming and doing the project. So I feel like it shows on camera. Yeah. Now, if you folks want to know where you can see Source Theater. Make the telephone call. The telephone number will be on your screen again if they put it on your screen. Yeah, there it is. Call and either speak to uh, KT or whoever answers the phone probably is capable of telling you where you can see Source Theater. So uh, by all means, make the call. Parents who are watching and grandparents who are watching you can do the same thing. Uh, find out where Source Theatre is playing and uh, maybe get to see some of the work that they're doing. There's no question that the, the, the film that they made, they're making, this new one that you're making, uh, did you tell me, you told me a little bit about that. Yes. We've got about four minutes. It's called Surviving Lunch and it's about bullying and school violence and also gun violence in the schools. And so we're working with a lot of the schools in our community, with our school resource officers, to get a dialogue going about with this story about a young girl whose father is killed in a school shooting. Have you, have you done anything on bullying? We have. We have done plays on bullying before in the schools. I, I don't know, I don't know what, what motivates bullying. I think it's the most, one, probably one of the most heartless, yeah. Uh, and, and cruel mm -hmm. thing that anyone can do to someone else. Absolutely. And I know when I was teaching, which was 20 years, and I have wonderful years, I loved teaching, and I was teaching drama and English, and we would do, because the term bullying wasn't, uh, it was coined, but it wasn't thought of in those terms. But we would do that kind of thing, belittling somebody. Yes. That yes. was the, the, the improvisation. And you can belittle someone. You can make it, how could you wear your hair that way? It's so silly. You know, yeah. And well, you're such a handsome guy, you know, that, that uh, you, you wouldn't be hurt by that. But yeah. you are hurt by that because oh, people saying nasty things is, is, is painful. And I think that the, the, whole, the whole idea of bullying just it disturbs me terribly. Yes. Because I know that it can be very, very difficult for someone to withstand it and they, they make a choice of suicide instead. Mm -hmm. How awful is that? Yes. 
Okay, we have a few minutes, and we do want to thank KT for the work that she does and has done for so many years. Thank you. And I, I didn't ask you, but if you had a wish, one wish, what would it be? My wish is that our film go on to be seen by thousands of young people across America. Millions. Millions. There you go. <laughs> I believe that, and it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Your wish? My wish is that um, creatives and film directors keep making movies that inspire the youth to be better as a whole. Well, all healthy, wonderful wishes, and uh, although they're, they're personal in terms of, of your own uh, growth and your own the things that you do, but that's what you know best. Yes. And you know you can't wish that you could build a bridge because you don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although you are building bridges. Yes. We are building to, that bridge. To understanding, and that's so wonderful. I remember you used to come on with some kids, and they would talk about, uh, we'd find out beforehand, some of the questions that they're asked, or some of the, the, the topics that are brought up after they see the plays. I was, at first, I think you came on even in radio days. I don't know. I think you did. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, was, it was amazing to me what the kids will bring up to other kids. Yes. And once they see it spoken and see it in real life, or copying real life on stage, they're free to talk about it openly. And that's an amazing discovery, my friend. Mm -hmm. And I wish that we, you'd start little source theaters all over the country. Have you thought about that? We have. We have. Oh, you I, need we funding. Do, we do trainings. I do train people around the country so on how That's to do good. it. Yeah. Funding may help. The funding fact would is, help a lot. The, the fact <laughs> is that, that what, what, what uh, KT does should get some enormous funding from good sources because what you're doing is really enormously helpful to young people. And we're about out of time, are we, Lucy? 30 seconds, well, I can cover that with an inhale or an exhale. <laughs> I'm delighted to meet you. You're a handsome, talented young man My and you have no place to go but up. Thank so we're so gonna much. say we met, we knew you when, and I'm gonna say, save this <laughs> film and play it when you're a big star. Yeah. You're gonna be, a great producing director of, of major productions. Thank you. And you're going on to do more and more wonderful things for young people. And that's how you stay young. You see, that's the ticket. That's the ticket. Bye-bye <laughs> for now. See you next time. The time really flew. We bid you adieu from community. Wanna know why we love it here so check out